Hello, welcome back to MF Woodshop. Today I'm going to cut the spindles for the back support. These are the longest spindles on the rocking chair and um, I had to actually go to another shop to actually do this. So what I'm doing here is marking out the um, beads and coves on a uh, just a storyboard if you will and uh, having my measurements and what kind of cut to be making so that's what I'm making here just a story pole. Now this is the lathe I had to use to accomplish this spindle. Uh, just a normal lathe but uh, my lathe is a mini lathe so I, I wasn't able to accomplish a spindle of this size. Talk to him all the time. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's in the cool video. He is. He did a video where he, he, he was showing, he was doing a shop tour. Yeah. And he was behind his lathe and he goes, see this big spray on the wall in here? That's where I hit a bug in wood. Oh, yeah, I saw that. squirt <laughs> yeah. up. I'm like, oh, that's gross. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Guy's wood shop is uh, where I went. He actually lives about a half hour from me. That's him in the background right there. <laughs> so definitely go check out his channel. Uh, you won't be disappointed. He makes some great furniture and uh, a lot of tables. He, he likes his tables. <laughs> but he was kind enough to give me a shop tour and show me his past projects that he was making. So on to the spindle. Um, I laid everything out on this with the story pole and laid all my lines out and what you're seeing here is I actually have already made one so I'm using that as a reference as well as you can see and you know just like all the other spindles a lot of beads and a lot of coves. Um, it was pretty simple turning it was just unique in the length of the turning. So guy in the background, he is uh, taking uh, pictures of a mallet that I, uh, that I gave him. Uh, you may have seen the mallet on my Facebook page and Instagram page that I made a few days ago. And uh, that's the picture that he's taking a picture of. <laughs> or that's the mallet that he's taking a picture of. He is going to post that on his Instagram for his... Uh, what he calls uh, hand tool Thursdays. This steady rest here is just a homemade steady rest that guy had made and uh, I'm really glad he had one because uh, I got a lot of chattering even with this uh, steady rest. Uh, just a homemade steady rest with uh, roller blade uh, wheels and uh, it, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I still got a lot of chattering with it. I'm not sure if I was using it right. Uh, this is the first time I've used a lathe of this size, so um, one of the first times anyway, I should say. Um, so it was definitely a new experience for me anyway, so um, I, I'm glad he used it. It did help out a lot, um, but I still ended up with a lot of sanding, uh, especially right there in the middle. So I had a good time with the guy that night. We was, uh, I, I went over there about 6, 6.30, and I didn't end up leaving until around midnight. Um, or actually, I didn't really get home until about midnight, so I left there about 11.30ish. And um, we was just mostly talking shop, and that's kind of why the project took as long as it did. And then we was talking and, uh, you know, when you talk, uh, time gets away from you. So, <laughs> so sorry, guy, for keeping you up so late on a uh, Wednesday night. But, and I really appreciate uh, me using your lathe. 
A uh, lot of the same tools and techniques uh, from my other spindles on this build. Um, you know, a lot of uh, beads and coves again, and you know, rolling the body on those beads is it's pretty important. Um, the tenons, that's what I'm getting ready to cut here. Um, they are one inch tenons that will go all the way through the seat. And then on the bottom of the seat, it'll have a uh, wedge to wedge it in. So it'll be cut down the middle of it when I get to final assembly and then put a wedge in it to wedge it in place. That was the only real part I had to measure. Everything else was done really by eye and off of the story pull that I made. I still think one of the challenging parts of turning for advanced turners, probably no big deal, but for you know an intermediate turner such as myself, uh, is tapering. Uh, tapering a spindle down to uh, from one size to another is uh, still kind of challenging, even for me, just to make it look right. I think I did pretty good on both of these, and both of these spindles were pretty much spot on. I even got guys approval on them, so I know I'm good. Now there was a lot of sanding in this and uh, I'm not going to show you all of it but uh, this started out at 100 grit and I finished around 320 grit. Now I still got to go back and sand with the grain by hand to get some of the uh, marks out and I'll do that at home. So throughout the night, me and Guy was talking about this uh, piece that I was, I was bending up. He let me use his bandsaw too, so I could resaw a piece there while I was there. Uh, there's pictures of that on his Instagram as well. And uh, anyway, throughout the night, we was talking about this piece that I was trying to bend or getting ready to bend for this rocking chair. And this is what he was showing me. Uh, you know, if you veneer it, you could uh, bend it pretty easy, but. I really want to stay away from veneers, but if I have to, I will. So that's pretty much all I got today. Uh, thanks again, Guy, and uh, I'll uh, see everybody on the next project.